All right, Strawberry. We're going to jump into Strawberry, the workflow utility and software package that can reside over the top of HyperFS. HyperFS contains the the shared file system and the low latency access to large SAN or LAN. And Strawberry provides an organizational searchable uh, software that resides over the top of that. Uh, version 4 of Strawberry uh, is released now and this is the admin utility. I'm going to go through the admin panel first and then jump into the, the user experience. The admin is where you can download the client software. The client software does reside on any Strawberry uh, client that is opening, closing projects. Uh, you can download that there. There are a few tabs across the top, Users, Projects, View, Archive, and Miscellaneous. Under Users, uh, we can create users here and assign them their teams. And the teams will populate over here. The idea of teams in Strawberry is to create organizational units that, that the search, the Google-like search, will just give results for whatever teams you're a part of. That keeps your search a little less, uh, uh, the results a little honed in to what you're currently working on instead of searching the entire project log that's that's on the entire thing. It could be thousands of projects. So putting it into Teams um, helps keep your, your search down. The uh, user rights are admin. Admins can log into this admin panel and when admins search, they see everybody's team stuff. So they see, they see every project that's ever been created with Strawberry. Users uh, is the next level signified by the U. Users can search just what, what uh, projects they're team members of. And in the case of uh, assigning a project to another team, a user also has the rights to assign a project to another team. And guest guests can only see projects in their perspective small area that they've been given access to. They also cannot give projects access to another team. So this is often used for freelance or students. Teams can be, any number of teams can be created and then any number of users can be assigned any number of teams on the fly. The users should be noted also this can tie into Active Directory uh, for facilities that uh, don't want to recreate every user uh, inside the Strawberry system. The Projects tab lists all the projects on the system and we, ca we can as the administrator assign those projects to teams here as well. We can also get an idea if over here with parent projects and sub projects, we can get an idea of is this project part of other projects or is it being used by other projects? Uh, and that is helpful to determine uh, uh, if media is being used uh, in, a, in a parent project. So as the admin, I can delete uh, projects from here. This will delete the, the this deletion will delete the project metadata and and low res proxies that are also associated with those projects. And I can force an archive from here, and I can encode from here. Encoding is built into version four, and that is take taking a, a, an edge engine that is looking at all of the files that are being either copied into Strawberry projects or rendered or uh, ingested into Strawberry projects and it's making a low-res pro uh, H.264 pro uh, file uh, out of that. So I can, I can call for a, a re-encode of a project. Status options are the ability to add just more metadata and flow 
to the strawberry. Uh, maybe, maybe we have different departments that the projects are flowing to. So we can add these in as uh, checkboxes that the editors can, can move projects from, from uh, department to department. We can add status here. Custom metadata fields uh, for naming conventions. We can add that here. Uh, one of the great features of Strawberry is to utilize templates to very quickly get up and running. Um, those templates can have automatic names, drop down menu boxes, uh, searchable metadata in those project names that we can define here. And a little bit more about the template is if we're we select a given template for a certain resolution, uh, then we can go and set up our uh, project file at resolution, and it will point to the right media locations so that we can get up and editing just as quick as a, uh, naming our project and hitting the OK button. Freeze options are available. Uh, users, uh, the users can freeze a project. Uh, basically, this would uh, halt the project and, and only allow the person who, who froze it to, to melt the project. And this would be used in a situation where you want to make a, pro, a strawberry project read only and basically freeze it for a point of time. Maybe the project's been pulled off the sand, taken to another facility or, or, or home on a laptop, and then they, they bring that back into the facility. They've done a bunch of changes, and then they can melt the project. There could be other uses as well. Projects tab and the view tab. Once again, the view, what's called view, is is an engine that runs in the background on the Strawberry server itself and makes all of the media into low-res proxies. These low, the low-res proxies can have metadata assigned to them at a clip level, and it allows better searching of the material. Um, so this panel controls where our proxy files are located. The blacklist would be a file type that you do not want to have the encoder try to encode. Adjustable bit rate that can be set here as a general uh, bit rate for the H.264 uh, material. Resolution that can be set for your proxies on a on a uh, global setting. And to understand image sequences, uh, this would be like a TIFF sequence or a DPX se sequence. Recognize, uh, view can recognize this as a single file. And time code burn-in. Node and worker control, uh, this is a scalable encoder. So we can add nodes uh, in the form of more Genesis IAP servers. They, they bring in more uh, encoding power in case uh, we, we're really creating a lot of, lot of material uh, per day, and adding workers to speed up the encode process and have basically more, more encodes. Download options. Uh, this is to allow users to download proxy files or allow users to download the high-res files. Um, you as the administrator can turn this on and off. And the archive tab, uh, Strawberry can have any number of archive strategies. One of the really nice features of, of Strawberry is it essentially it creates two tiers of your storage. Online, what are you working on today? What, what, what do you need online on the online storage? And what, what is offline? What, what's in a different location? These archive strategies can be a number of things. Uh, they can be uh, LTFS strategy. Let's say to final project, put it on an LTFS tape and uh, let the customer walk out the door with their with their assets. Um, it could be a uh, Genesis IAP uh, archive server running running QSTAR uh, that is handling multiple tiers. It could be a NAS within your facility. It basically is just a mount point that Strawberry server can access, and we can set several different rules. Plain is going to take the Strawberry project 
in its entire entirety off of the online storage, leave it in its folder structure, leave all the files and folders intact, and move it to the destination. Tar is going to put it into a .tar and a .zip. Reasons .tar are used, uh, oftentimes if you have projects with 10,000 files in them, sometimes the underlying archive may handle a single tar or single zip much better than 10,000 files. We also can set some sort of check on this archive. The uh, fingerprint is the easiest, quickest uh, check. Uh, and then the CRC is a full bit for bit check on the data. What, what this is used for is to make sure that because this is an archive, an archive is moving data from source, putting it on destination, then deleting it from source. So before Strawberry will delete that, at least we'll do a fingerprint on it, and then for the, the most security, we'll do a CRC on it. Once we know bit for bit that they move over, then they can be deleted. So we can have any number of archive strategies. With also the ability to archive, which would be removed from online, put somewhere else, we also have project copy to strategies. Same thought process. <clears throat> we have a source, that's our online SAN. We make a destination. We mount that destination local to the Strawberry server so it can, it can move the, the project. And we can set it up with the same, uh, keep the files plain, tar them up, zip them up, check them. As the administrator, you don't have to turn this, any, the, any of these strategies on. And then an asset copy to strategy. This would be the, allowing the users, uh, same thought process, all the same features, but allowing the users to move an individual clip uh, from, from the user interface. So different uh, workflow strategies can be put into place here. And miscellaneous tab is dealing and uh, creating and modifying our templates. Templates are one of the strongest features of, of Strawberry. Once again, it's a workflow tool to help the organization uh, speed up things. And, and by creating templates, uh, they really get up and running fast on their project with a click of a button. So any number of templates can be in play. And we have three basic templates. Generic is just going to create folder structures. So this one is often used in Final Cut Pro environment or Adobe After Effects or something that, that doesn't have uh, unique uh, storage requirements underneath it. Avid template is going to create our project directory for us automatically and our AMA folder and our Avid uh, media files folder automatically for us. And Adobe is meant for Premiere. It could be used to automatically create the waveform uh, and, the, and the caching that uh, is useful in a SAN environment. So Adobe template will handle the cache files and thumbnails. So when you edit on a, on a Premiere on edit bay one on a SAN and then you get up and go to edit bay two on a SAN, if you don't have the cache and waveform files traveling with you, when you open that up on the second edit bay, it may sit there and just generate those waveform and cache files. So that's what this template solves. It brings those uh, files with you so that machine to machine to machine as you're opening the Adobe uh, Premiere, you're not waiting for uh, those files to get created. And uh, so that's, that's what we can do with the admin. So we're controlling users and teams adding those users to various teams, switching teams up, changing their permission levels between admin 
user, and guest. We're deleting projects. We're taking a look at, at projects, see what, what projects are part of other projects. Uh, we're, we are deciding how the encode, how the proxy looks, how big the resolution, what's the bit rate, how many workers we have working on the on that. We're creating archive strategies. Most commonly people are using archive strategies, but also we can do copy to or copy asset. And we're creating templates. So what does the strawberry look like for the user? So the users will use Strawberry basis, they will they will log into it. They'll take their their username and log in. And when they log in, the left hand side will be the team the search, Google like search, and the results of this search will only get the teams that they're part of. So the admin, you can see I'm I'm a role admin down here. If I search, I get I get everything that's in the Strawberry system. These projects are all previously created and saved on the SAN, the underlying uh, storage. I can search in assets, this checkbox. This is going to search, allow searches into the metadata of clips themselves. If we've added clips in, clip names, file names, that are inside these project files. Uh, also some uh, AVID uh, bin names that, that can be traversed and, and, and the data brought into assets. If I'm searching in projects, I'm searching in, in the project's name and then possibly the metadata for the project. So I have the ability to put in a free-flowing uh, text box metadata that is then searchable with this project. The part it should be mentioned that the Strawberry design and the flow of the workflow, everything about it is is meant to be simple. So you you don't see endless uh, metadata fields that nobody ends up using. We've we've decided just to make one field that's a free-flowing field that I can put any number of, of text things in here and that becomes searchable. Uh, so it's a much cleaner way to do it than um, having 25 fields that nobody's going to put anything in anyway, eventually. So I've got a pretty powerful search here that eliminates information as I type and uh, I can find different projects uh, this way through this search. I can make the search window bigger. Um, I can look at clips. I can play back clips. Uh, the clips have timeline in them. I can see technical metadata on the clips. So this, I've got searchability at the clip level. I've got searchability at the project's name at the meta project's metadata level, at file names themselves, uh, also search full search into the archive. If I don't want to see what's in the archive, I can uncheck that box. So I've got search utilities. Um, so what we'll show here is this, the underlying SAN. And basically, uh, in an AVID environment, we've mounted both an M and a P. M is meant for media, that's where our AVID media files folder directory will go, and P is where our project goes. In a Premiere situation, we can save the Premiere project right along with the media, so we primarily would just mount the M. And this, this M and P are virtualized folders. Uh, they, do, they are folders down on the SAN, and in Strawberry, when we haven't opened anything, these folders are empty. So I'm going to create a new I'm an editor as part of a team and I can start and get off and running uh, quickly 
I just uh, a template that I want to use that, that has been pre-set up. Give it a name. Now it's signified in white up here. This, this lets me as the editor know that I have webinar project open and I have right access to it. What's happened under, under the scenes is everything has been created for me, including a strawberry project with a date and the name of the project. So with the double click here, I'm up and running. I'm not setting my media points, my, cap my capture render locations. I'm not setting up where am I, where am I going on the sand with my, my renders. I'm up and running. These, these uh, names can be modified to, to suit a, a wide range of different naming conventions for the site, including that Dropbox, uh, drop-down box where I could departmentalize uh, the system. In Avid, I'm now editing with this uh, webinar project completely as if it was local disk for the most part. I can import, I can make new sequences, uh, I can edit as is. Now, we're usually collaborating on media, so I can always alt tab back to Strawberry, use the search tools to look for other things that I might want to add into my own project. And I'll open this content here. This middle section then is going to help me get, get uh, feedback information. Uh, I can give this particular project, this this one I have open writable, I can give it access to other teams here so that they can see it in their search criteria. I could set a project status for that so that can be searched on. I can enter a description that becomes searchable now within the system, use the search tools. I find something that I want to work on. I can click on it and now there's an add button. So the first button was clipped new project, but now Strawberry interface lets me add this as a sub project. So I've added this as a sub project and now this middle window will show me stuff that I'm working on currently. I've got the Berlin project added to my own project. I can continue this. I got my favorite project, blah. I can add. I can add however many projects um, to that as I want. And then when I go back to my edit, I've got all the materials that are under that under a read only. So another thing that Strawberry is doing is keeping keeping the workflow intact. So first project open is my writable project. I can down here on the underlying SAN, if I go take a look at what's happened now, I've got various folders now that have been virtualized and brought into this edit, edit bay uh, as I've searched for material and clicked the add material. I'll have read only access to the subsequent ads, but I'll have right access to everything that I have uh, added as my original project. So I can continue to add. No, continue fresh with material that I've been adding. Uh, material from other fix, add that into mine, it, uh, uh, just like on a system yeah, with the exception that everything below the read only is read only including bins. Everything above that I have right access to so I can save that webinar project bin, that's my writable bin. If I close that, go in Strawberry, I can close that and 
continue on with another project uh, using the search, the new, the open. Uh, when I come to that project, I just search for it, click on it. Now I have an open button. Open that all back into the sand exactly where I with read only projects coming on because base has I've had these sub projects along. So then everything is there and I and I continue to to move along. Far right is a playback window. I can create more metadata on a clip level. This becomes searchable. I also have the ability to look at some of the metadata that's part of the clip. And as an editor, the editor has opened up the ability to download low and high res or copy this asset off the SAN. I will see those buttons here. Archive is a uh, integrated uh, piece. Well, what, uh, one of the great benefits is that all the projects go into the Strawberry system. They stay there. We have built-in archive. Let's say I want to archive this project now. I've clicked on webinar project. I and the uh, the archive panel can send this to to archive. I can send the archive and then whatever strategies I've for the team, uh, they, they can send that to archive. With check, they are searching materials that might archive uh, search on the stand. So with Strawberry, we put a, the, the, we put a graphical look to the instead of, uh, and the, the whole mindset here is to get searching, uh, project related, project related search into the strawberry interface instead of having them go into Explorer and Finder, endless uh, folders and uh, different uh, uh, places to find their material and get up and running very quickly. Strawberry can also manage multiple volumes. So if we have volume A, volume B, volume C, and the editors are looking all over between these three volumes for stuff, put Strawberry over the top, it virtualizes that, keeps them out of the finder, keeps them out of the explorer. They do the searches here. They look at the clips here in a regular uh, clip way. They use metadata and so the real, the real goal is to keep people out of the finer and of their, their editing tasks. 